Welcome to the Nuts of Tools video tutorial series created by the Software Engineering Institute at Carnegie Mellon University. This tutorial focuses on gaining an understanding of the Silk repository. Okay, I'm logged into a Linux machine here that contains a Silk repository. The repository on this machine is in the slash data folder. If you're not sure where the repository is on your machine, you can usually find it by looking for the silk data root dir environment variable. Just enter echo dollar sign silk data root dir and hit enter. As you can see, I have a couple of folders here and some configuration files. In this case, I have a folder for each sensor on the network a configuration file for each sensor on the network, and a silk configuration file. Depending on how your repository is set up, you may see folders here for each class, or you may simply see folders for each type. You may or may not have the sensor configuration files available to you. We'll take a look first at what's in the sensor folders. So I'll change directories into S1. Each of the sensor folders will have the same basic structure. Inside of the sensor folder will be type folders. In this case, I have six types of traffic in my repository. If I look in one of these type folders, I'll see folders for each year of data I have available. Then months. Then days. Inside of each day's folder, there will be a set of files containing flow for each hour of the day. You can see I have 24 files here. You may have less than 24 files if your sensor stopped collecting or if there is no traffic for that sensor for that type during a certain hour. You can see that each file is named with the type, then the sensor, then the date, and the hour. So going back to the root of the repository, let's take a look at the silk.conf file. One of the first things you'll see in the file is a list of sensors with their short names and their descriptions. In this case, I only have two sensors. The next thing you should see is a set of class descriptions. Classes are groupings of sensors, such as external gateways versus internal routers. Here there's just one class specified and it contains all sensors. Further down, each class will have a set of types as well as the default type or types that apply to that class. This file also defines which class is the default class. You may have one sensor.conf file that defines all of the sensors, or you may have one config file for each sensor. The information you see in these files is the same either way. It is also possible that Silk is set up so that you cannot see any sensor configuration files. If this is the case, you can still get to most of this information using the rwsite-info command. I'm going to show you what the sensor1 configuration file looks like. The information in the probe block is for pulling from the repository and not applicable unless you're setting up or changing how the sensors interact with the repository. The most important block here is the group block. Together with the sensor S1 block below, it defines the set of IP addresses that are on the internal side of the sensor and labels the rest of the IP address space as external. If you have access to the sensor.conf files, you can use them to determine which IPs are internal versus external for each sensor on the network. Thanks for watching this video tutorial from our Netza Tools video tutorial series.